everyone, this is David here from Sheets Finance. In this next part of our Getting Started series, I'm going to introduce to you the ratios function. The ratios function lets you pull hundreds of pre-calculated financial metrics and ratios for any of the 60,000 plus financial assets that we have available on our global database at Sheets Finance. Uh, it's super straightforward. You can pull uh, multiple metrics at once, multiple years at once. In fact, I'll show you functions where you can pull thousands of financial ratios with just one function. And just before we jump into it, I want to point out that everything is available in our documentation. So if you head to the drop down menu and you click guides and documentation, and some browsers may treat this as a pop up, so just be sure it doesn't get blocked, it'll open our website. And for example, when it comes to ratios, I can head down on the left hand side under the functions heading and go to key ratios. And this is the function we're going to be looking at today. And the documentation goes into a lot more detail than I will in this video. So uh, it's always available. So uh, head over there and check it out whenever you need. Cool. Let's jump into it. So heading back to our blank sheet, in the last few episodes of our Getting Started series, I've used the function generator to build functions for us. In this case, I'm just going to type them directly. The ratios function is pretty straightforward, and it might actually lend to a better explanation as we go. So the ratios function is part of our standard SF function. So if I do equals SF into cell A1 and then open bracket, it now wants me to enter the ticker uh, symbol for the asset that I'm after. In this case, we'll work with Apple. Next, uh, the function type. In this case, it is ratios because we're working with the ratios function. And then I'll just do close bracket and click enter. And now you'll see a lot of data is uh, poured out from that function. There are a hundred or so financial ratios. Uh, in this case, we haven't specified a particular quarter and we haven't specified a year or multiple years. So the function will default to the most recent annual statement. And at the time of this video, that's the 2022 annual financial statement for Apple. And you can see here, we've got a ton of pre-calculated metrics to look at revenue per share, net income per share, uh, PE ratios, um, all kinds of metrics and, and key key ratios that you'd want to look at if you were doing any any sort of investment analysis. So taking it to the next step, the next argument in the ratios function is named here subtype or sometimes we'll call them metrics. This is where we define what ratios we are after. So for instance, I could now enter revenue per share and now close bracket. And in this scenario, it will return just one number. And that is the revenue per, per share for the most recent annual statement. I haven't specified a quarter and I haven't specified any years. So it's just one figure. If I want multiple ratios, for instance, I want the revenue per share and the PE ratio on the most recent annual statement for Apple, I can then use the and operator. And then I can just add on the next ratio that I'm after. For instance, the PE ratio and I'll click enter. And once we start to uh, include multiple ratios, just like our other functions, the line item headers will pop up so that we can um, understand which figure is related to uh, which actual ratio and the year will pop up as well. And we can use the uh, fourth or the sorry, the fifth argument to uh, remove the line items and remove the headers, but we'll, we'll come back to that later. So now we've got revenue per share and the PE ratio. Let's also just add in a few other things. Um, I'll go to the front of our metrics here and I'll just add in the, the period and maybe I'll add in one more ratio. So like the current ratio, like so. And you'll see that the metrics are output in exactly the same order that we have them in the function. So in the function, we've got period and current ratio and revenue per share and PE ratio. So you'll see it goes period, current ratio, revenue per share, PE ratio. So this is the uh, this is this works like this so that you can better format the tables that you're trying to output. Um, yeah, it's very very handy. So now that's the latest financial statement, but let's just say we want a specific year. So now we can use the fourth argument and we can enter the year. So in this case, we could say, for instance, 2020. And click enter and our data will reload with the 2020 figures. Now that we're in the year uh, argument, we could actually enter a range. So let's just say we want the 2010 to 2020. We just use a dash and we do the two years 
just as you'd expect. Click enter on that. And now we're going to get the current ratio, the revenue per share and the PE ratio for Apple over 10 years from 2010 to 2020. So that is annual statements. Um, like I said, we can do some slight formatting adjustments. For instance, I can use this last argument called options and I can say NH for no header and I can say NLI for no line items. If I end those together, it will apply both options. If I click enter, we will now only have the actual data itself. We don't have that year heading row, 2010 to 2022, and we also don't have the actual line item. So that's the text that said revenue per share or current ratio or PE ratio. Great, so let's look at quarterly ratios. I'll get rid of these options because uh, they make it a little bit harder to read. And we'll go back to just a single year. So let's just do 2020. Quarterly, op, uh, quarterly ratios is really straightforward. You just head back to the actual function type. In this case, it's ratios and you append the quarter. So for instance, if you want the PE ratio, revenue per share or the current ratio from the perspective of Q1 in 2020, all you need to do is enter Q1 there. You just type it right on the end of ratios. So it's now ratios Q1, I'll click enter. And this looks very familiar. This is exactly how our historical financials work. Uh, it's it's exactly the same format. Uh, I can change that to Q2 and so on. And just to remind you, uh, we are outputting only four metrics, but for instance, I could get rid of all of this and just type all, or I could even leave it blank and we will get all of the ratios to choose from. So for instance, you could just generate all of these at first, have a little read through and then decide what you're after. Or you can use the function generator to, to actually search through all the available ratios and metrics that we've got per company. One last thing to point out is when you start to do multi years for uh, quarterly data, if I now enter, for instance, 20, let's just say 18 to 2022, I click enter. If I've specified the quarter, for instance, Q2, I will only get that quarter for each year. So you'll see here, this is Q2 for 2018, Q2 for 2019, and so on up to 2022. If I instead wanted all the quarters between two years, then all I need to do is remove the actual quarter number. So I head back to the function type, which is ratios Q2, and I just make it ratios Q, and I click enter. Doing this, I'm now getting all of the quarterly data between these two dates, so 2018 to 2022. So that's four columns per year, four quarters per year. Uh, so that is quite a lot of data. And you can see this is just one function and we now have thousands of data points on Apple to work from. Uh, often users will generate a lot of data, perhaps in a raw data sheet in their spreadsheet file and then reference that in some sort of analysis in another file to keep things clean or you can use all the various ways of defining the ratios that you're after and removing headers so that you can have it embedded in your dashboard as well. And one last uh, super handy functionality of the quarterly ratios function is that we can get the most recent quarterly data uh, without having to specify a particular year or a particular quarter. If you just want the latest information for that company, you can just remove the years and click enter and because I haven't specified a specific quarter, so it just says ratios Q, not ratios Q1 or Q2, for instance, this will just return the most recent quarterly data. And at the time of this video, uh, that's data from only a few months ago, which is Q3 for Apple for 2023. If I then define a specific quarter, for instance, Q2, but I don't enter the year, this will now get me the latest Q2 data for Apple. Uh, and so on. So this is really handy if you uh, just want the most recent information or the most recent specific quarter to perhaps compare between two stocks or just to get the latest data for that stock. And that's where we'll leave it for quarterly ratios. And last but certainly not least is TTM or the trailing 12 month data. 
uh, this is achievable in exactly the same way as our historical financials by just replacing the year argument with TTM, uh, lowercase. Uh, in, in this case, I'll just remove the quarterly part of the function type. So we're just going back to regular ratios and I'll click enter. Now, these are all the trailing 12-month ratios for Apple. You'll see that the year has now been replaced with TTM for reference and all the same metric chaining and selection of like specific metrics and formatting all still apply here as well. Cool. That's it for TTM and that's it for our uh, introduction to the ratios function. Uh, I'll take a moment just to remind you that you can build all of these functions with our function generator. You don't have to do them manually by hand like I've done in this tutorial. Just head to the extensions, drop down menu, go to Sheets Finance and open the function generator. It'll open over here on the right hand side and you'll be able to enter the stock that you're after uh, or the cell that that symbol is in. You can click real time and historical uh, for the case of ratios. You select it here under the type and then here in the subtype, you can either type into it to search for the particular ratios you are after, and you can select multiple, for instance, date, calendar year, period, revenue per share, net income per share. You can select uh, the report you're after and a date or multiple dates uh, when doing multi-years. And you'll see up the top here in our function display that it is built for us and simply clicking generate will insert the function that we've built uh, into our currently active square, sorry, cell <laughs> in our spreadsheet. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening and watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.